What's up, Professor Wergley's here. We just got done setting up fail to ban. We actually disabled the uncomplicated firewall there at the end. We should leave that enabled. So go ahead and do a sudo UFW enabled. Make sure that it is enabled. And you can look and see uh, what apps are, or what the status is, what apps are being allowed. So you'll see open SSH, which is essentially port 22 from anywhere, which is good. Now, we didn't spend too much time going over fail to ban. There's actually a good DigitalOcean documentation. It's for Ubuntu 14, but it's going over fail, ban, uh, fail to ban. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time going over fail to ban, but this is a good article to read to learn more about this content outside of the class. A lot of times I'll go over the minimum, and if you want to explore and kind of veer off the path a little bit at times, that would be good. That way, you go above and beyond the class, and that way you actually truly understand what fail to ban is and how to set it up. Now, we're just using fail to ban default configuration. The article that I just showed you talks about customizing fail to ban, which would be a, a good separate video to go over. Okay, so I'll try to make another video on fail to ban, but for this video, we're going to focus on setting up a LAMP stack. First things first, you need to set up a web server. I just got done drawing that diagram about the differences between a server and a web server. But essentially, you have the outside firewall, you have the inside firewall. I have a server, which is a piece of hardware, and I have a web server, which is going to host my websites, which is a piece of software that executes and loads my websites. Okay, so there's, uh, it's completely different than a real server when we're talking about a web server, but we don't have a web server installed. We're going to be using Apache for our web server. At first, we're going to set up a LAMP stack. Later down the road, we're going to set up a mean stack. So we're going to go over both stacks. Those are two very popular stacks to use. First, we're going to look at a LAMP stack, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. First thing to set up is going to be Apache. Now, we've already updated the server. We've already upgraded the server, so we don't need to do that again, but we do need to install Apache. So I'll do a sudo apt-get install. You'll see I'm on the user that we created. I'm going to install Apache 2. Okay, that is Apache for Ubuntu. I'm going to install Apache 2. Go ahead and click on yes. It's going to take some space. It's also going to install several packages and several configuration files. Some of them we're going to be going over. And once I install Apache, I now have a web server. So earlier we went to the public DNS. Nothing happened. If I now go to the public DNS, okay, you're going to see this spinning wall. Now this is normal. Now think about why this is happening. The site can't be reached. First thing it says check the connection. The other thing it says check the proxy or the firewall. Bingo. We opened up SSH on the uncomplicated firewall on UFW. We opened up SSH on the Amazon AWS console. We opened up port 80 and 443 on the console, but we haven't opened up 80 and 443 on the UFW. Okay, so we need to check that. So if I do uh, UFW status again, you'll see it only allows SSH. I can do UFW, okay, list apps. I'm clicking up, so it's actually app list. And you'll see I have a few, more, a few more applications that are trying to reach the firewall, but they're being blocked. Well, let's see what these are. Okay, so I can do a UFW app info and let's do app info on apache you'll see apache is 80 well what about apache full okay apache full uh, let me see i think i have to do quotes here because it's two words let me try quotes you'll see apache full is 80 and 443 but what about apache secure there were three up there Apache Secure is just 443. So when I do app list, Apache is port 80. Apache Fool is 80 and 443. 
and Apache Secure is just 443. So this is HTTP, this is HTTP and HTTPS, and this is just HTTPS. Okay, so for now, we want to enable both. So we can add that. So we can say sudo ufw allow, and I'm going to do it in quotes, Apache full. Okay, you'll see the v4 added, uh, rule added here, that's v4, and this one's v6. So now if I do sudo status, you'll see it's open SSH and Apache full on internet v4 and also v6. So now if I come back to the browser, do a refresh, it works. Okay, it works. So I have two firewalls. First, the inbound rules on the server must be open. So 80, 22, and 443 must be open. Next, the firewall on the web server needs to be opened. Okay, so I need to have 22, which is right here. This is port 80 and 443. So now the hardware server and the web server have the same ports open. Okay, if I click the up arrow, if you did the netstat command, you can click up. Go back to net, uh, net stat so we can see the network. Now you'll see 22 is open, also 80 is open. Okay, we need to install HTTPS for port 443 to show on net stat. We have it open on the firewall, but we haven't set up HTTPS yet, which we will do in a later lecture. Okay, right now we're just going to focus on setting up the LAMP stack. Next, we're going to install mysql and make sure it's secure so i'm going to do sudo app get okay before we proceed just remember this is the default landing page so apache's working i can finally reach my server from the web because i have a server and a web server the web server we we requested the public dns so that's the ip address it went to the web server the web server then responded back with the Apache default landing page. And remember, this actually has some valuable information. I would actually go ahead and read some of this. One thing is it tells you where the public HTML directory is. So it's in var www.html. If you remember, that's the same directory from 2830. We weren't using Ubuntu, we were using a Red Hat Linux instance. So it's the same location and it's the same uh, default file name. If you remember, index is the default file name to open up. We went over that in 2830. Make sure you go over those rules for this class again. The other thing is it talks about where the docs are. It also tells you where the configuration files are. Okay, it says the configuration files are here. There's a test question that asks you what are the configuration files. So here's one of them, apache2.config. Okay, it tells you where your public HTML directory is. It, it tells you where to share web applications. It tells you the root directory. There's a lot of information here. So maybe read this page before you remove it. Okay, here's some commands. Uh, A2 enable mod, A2 disable mod, A2 enable site. We're actually going to be using these commands because we're going to set up a virtual host later. So read through this and you'll go ahead and get a head start on the coming lectures. Coming back to the server, let's install MySQL. So I'm going to do a sudo app git install MySQL server. Okay, so I'm going to install a MySQL server on the same server. Now what's nice about AWS is I can have my Apache server on one instance and I can have my MySQL on another instance. And what's nice about that is if I need 100 databases or 1,000 MySQL servers, I can do so. Okay, so I can separate the server and have many-to-one relationship. Okay, so here's my server. And then I can have a MySQL server over here. And the server and MySQL are talking back to each other. Uh, and then I can have another MySQL server. Maybe I need a lot of database. Maybe I do... Uh, database splicing. Okay, so I can have many. Right now, what we're doing is we're setting up a server 
In this server, we have the web server. And in the same server, we have the MySQL server. So here's my web server. Here's my MySQL server. This looks horrible because I'm writing with my finger. And here's my server, hardware server. Server, web server, MySQL, they're talking back and forth on the same server. So this is what it looks like. Okay, kind of a little funny drawing that I did there, but that's what's going on underneath the hood. Let's go back to the command line. Let's set this up. So I did sudo apt-get mysql server install. I'm going to do a command yes to go ahead and install the packages and take up the space. Okay, notice the order that I'm doing things here. I'm installing my web server, then I'm installing my database, and then I'm going to install PHP. Okay, so Linux, so we're talking about a LAMP stack. Linux is Ubuntu. I have a Ubuntu server. That's my Linux operating system. Then the A is Apache. I just set up Apache here. Now I'm setting up my SQL server, which we just did, and then I'm going to set up PHP. So the order of LAMP is kind of the same way that we installed the order. We set up a Ubuntu server, then we installed Apache, and then we installed MySQL, and then next we're going to install PHP. Before we move to PHP, make sure your MySQL is installed securely. Remember, we're making a production server here, so we want everything to be secure. So I'm going to do a sudo MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. Okay, you'll see here securing the MySQL server deployment. A lot of times when you're just doing a prototype, you may not need it secure. But once you launch your site live and you have people using it, people are going to try to hack into your server. So you want it secure. Make sure you run this secure installation before you make the site public. If you're in development mode, you may not need it to be secure. But what's one good thing about installing it secure while you're developing is you can ensure that your website works. If you're doing it in development mode, later you do secure and then you host your site live and then it crashes, you may not know how to fix it. So what we're doing here is we're getting everything set up in production. That way as we continue through the semester, we know it's gonna work. Okay, so there's some pros and cons with setting up secure at the beginning. You'll see MySQL is using a blank password. Uh, you'll see here we need to validate. We need to type a password. Would you like to set up the validate password plugin? Okay, I recommend you do. When you log into MySQL as a root user for 2830, we could just do sudo MySQL and we logged in as the root user where we can delete everything or we can create everything. You don't want to do that on a production server. You should not be able to log in as the root. We just disabled root logins from SSH. We definitely want to disable root logins to our MySQL server. In this day and age, data is the new oil, or they say data is the new gold. Your data is one of the most valuable things when you create an application or you create a business. So make sure your data is secure. We're going to type yes. And how, how strong do you want your password? Well, we're just going through this process. We're still in development mode. Go ahead and set up a medium password or even a low quality password. But when you put this site live, I recommend you switch it to a strong password. You can always run sudo MySQL secure installation later. Okay, but for now I'm gonna type zero. I'm just gonna click a low password. I'm gonna do the same password as my user just so I remember them. If you do a different password, that's great. That's what you should be doing on a production server, but I recommend you write them down. So you have a limited user's password, then your root user should be a different password, and then your root database password should also be different. So you should have three different passwords here. Okay, do you wish to continue with the password provider? Or click on yes. Remove anonymous users. Okay, you'll see by default a MySQL installation has an anonymous user allowing anyone to log into MySQL without having a user account created for them. This is intended for only testing and to make the installation go a bit smoother. You should remove them before moving into a production environment. 
hey, anonymous user, you could just type MySQL and get in. Uh, I'm going to click yes. We're going to remove anonymous users. It says normally roots should only be allowed to connect from local hosts. This ensures that someone cannot guess at the root password from the network. Kind of similar to the fail to ban that we set up and the firewall. If you want to disable root login remotely, we're going to click on yes. Remove test database and access to it. You'll see by default, MySQL comes with a database named test that anyone can access. This is also intended only for testing and should be removed before moving into production environment. I'm not going to delete the test database for now because we're still in the testing stage. But later for production, you would want to remove it. That way people cannot access your test data because in some cases your test data is real data and it may be valuable. So I'm going to click no for now, but in a production, you should remove it. And then it says reload the privilege table. You'll see reloading privilege tables will ensure that all changes made so far will take effect immediately. So we'll, we will want to reload the privilege table. And you'll see it's all done. So it's just a few steps that you go through to make sure your database is secure. One of the biggest ones is disallowing root login remotely. Okay, that's very important. Because if somebody hacks into your database as the root user, they can do anything. They have open access to all the data in there. And they can delete, add, remove, I repeat to myself, whatever. They can do everything. Okay, so make sure you cannot log in as the root. And make sure the root has a password. Those are the two main things I wanted to go over here. Next, we're installing PHP. So I'll do a sudo app git. Install PHP. Now there's a few things here. I need to install PHP. I also need to install the PHP Apache 2 mod. And I also need to install PHP MyCrypt. The last thing is I need to install PHP dash MySQL. Okay, so one is just installing PHP on the server. Another is to allow uh, Apache to run. Another is for the PHP MySQL. Okay, so make sure you do all of them. So there's four of them there. I'm going to click on enter. You'll see building the, uh, building the dependency tree, reading the state. You'll see PHP MyCrypt is not available, but is referred to, referenced to by another package. This may mean the package is missing, has been obsolete, or is only available from another source. You'll see it also cannot find the uh, Apache 2 mod. So let me go back. Okay, when it came, when, when you update from 16 to 18, some of the things may change. So this tutorial here is a really good tutorial. It's by DigitalOcean. I really like their tutorials. It's step by step. You'll see we installed Apache 2 successfully. Uh, we can do the config test. It shows you where the main configuration file is. You'll see we enabled the uncomplicated firewall. So that's good. Uh, we installed MySQL server. We did this secure installation. So this is very similar to my tutorial. And let's see here. We may have typed some of the things wrong. So this says install PHP, lib Apache 2, mod PHP. PHP MyCrypt and PHP MySQL. So let me see what I did. I may have misspelled the uh, lib Apache 2 mod PHP. So I'm going to copy this command and paste it. You can read it off my screen. Install PHP, lib Apache 2 mod PHP, PHP MCrypt, PHP MySQL. Okay, we see we have some errors there. Let me see. Uh, you can always copy the error and see what's happening here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it in the browser. Let's see what's going on. Okay, Ubuntu 18 has been out for a while. So it should be relatively easy to find. Now, when Ubuntu first came out, you get these errors. It would be really hard to find. So in fact, when Ubuntu 18 first came out, I recommended to stick with Ubuntu 16. But now Ubuntu 20 is out. 
Ubuntu 18 stable. So now it's it's fine to switch to Ubuntu 18. But a lot of times you don't want to switch right when it's new because there's bugs and some people haven't figured it out yet. You'll see mcrypt has been deprecated in PHP 7. Okay, so if you still need it, you can use uh, this PCL. Okay, you need to define what the uh, extension is. If it's deprecated, I don't think we need it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the command. So let me remove this command. And we're just going to install these three. So I'm going to click on go. Go ahead and click on yes. So that one little part of the command was messing up the entire command. So it didn't install anything. So until you get the green light that says yes or no, which we just typed yes, then you know it's actually working. So since the mcrypt is deprecated, I'm going to skip it for now. If we have problems later, we can come back and install it. But I think for now we'll be okay. We're not going to go too far in a LAMP stack. We learned the LAMP stack in 2830 in the previous course. This semester we're going to start with a LAMP stack, but then we're really going to focus on the mean stack. So I don't think we'll need that package, but if we have problems later, we can always go back and fix it. You'll, so you'll see that everything was setting up and everything was created successfully. I did not get any errors. So now I have Ubuntu, which is the L. I installed Apache and we set it up, everything securely. I installed MySQL, which is the M. So L is Ubuntu for Linux, A is Apache, M is my Siegel, we set that up, and now we just installed PHP. Okay, so you your LAMP stack should be ready to go. One thing you want to do after you get everything set up is you may want to do a restart. So I could do sudo service Apache 2, which is our uh, uh, Apache server, restart. Okay, just make sure you restart the server. That way, everything that's been changed in the configuration file works. And then if we go back to the public DNS, reload the page, it should still work. Okay, if you cannot see this default landing page, most likely it's a port problem. So either you didn't enable the right ports on the AWS console, which are the three are down here, or you don't have the right ports enabled on the UFW. You can always disable the UFW. So you just say sudo US, uh, UFW disable. Okay, you see, you'll see firewall stopped and disabled. Later, when you figure out the problem, you can always go back and enable it. Okay, so if you have, uh, if, if you load the DNS and immediately it says page not found, most likely you have not installed a web server like Apache. If you put the DNS there and it just keeps spinning for a long time, more than likely it's a port. Okay, more than likely it's a port. Now we've set up a LAMP stack. We still need to set up the permissions for the public HTML directory. So we're almost done. And then we're going to set up our first Hello World page. Stick with Professor Wergley's. We'll see you in the next video.